Hello and welcome to the Easy Solution Systems tutorial videos. I'm Jesse Brown and today we'll be going through scales in retail mail. We want to go into maintenance and then we're going to choose system setup, point of sale tab, and here you can see random weight barcodes. So for random weight barcodes, there are five fields, department, part number, weight, amount, and check digit. The current one that's being used at the moment has four. So the letters represent the amount of uh, digits that will make up the barcode. So for example, the two Ds will mean that there will need to be um, two digits and P will have five and so on. The two numbers that we are interested in is the part number and the weight. So each um, scale can be configured to have different combinations. For example, some have part number and amount instead of weight, but the one we're wanting to use at the moment contains weight, which is the first one. So you'll need to make sure that this random weight barcode needs to match the scale that you have um, connected to your computer, otherwise it will not work. So we're going to save that. So here I'm going to bring up a picture. So here we can see in this picture, this is what the scale looks like. And as you can see, it has all kinds of buttons where it has been programmed for each item. So let's say, for example, someone wants to buy salami. So the salami is cut and placed on the scale and the scale will produce a barcode with the description. So here you can see in this barcode, department is 02. The part number is 00105. The weight here is 00525, which is about half a kilogram. And nine is the check digit. So what we're going to do now is go to the point of sale screen. Then we're going to enter the part number either by scanning it or entering it manually. We're going to enter it manually. So that's the barcode that was printed for the product that we've just entered. So once we press enter, Retail Man will strip all the digits except for the part number, which is 00105. And then it will fetch the part details from the stock file. It will then get the quantity from the second batch of numbers, which is um, 00525 divided by 1000, which makes it in kilograms and then it will calculate the amount and total. So once we've entered that, notice that the quantity is 0.525, which was the weight. The total amount for one kilogram is 12.99, and then it calculates the total as being $6.82. That's the first use of the scale that we're seeing. There are other types of scales that sit on the checkout. So they will normally be connected to the checkout computer through either a serial port or through a USB port. So to set this one up, we'll need to go to maintenance and then hardware setup, and then we choose scale, and then we choose the scale name or scale type. If you don't have uh, this particular scale, you can just choose the generic scale. If it's a serial, we'll need to know the COM port, board rate, parity, bits, stop bits, and handshake. Once we know all those details, we'll need to enter them in. The read time is the time that it takes once you put the product onto the scale. So for this we use 500, which means it's 0.5 seconds or half a second. So another option here we use is enable weighing. And this is uh, a number that you'll be getting from the manual of your scale. If your scale matches one of these, let's just do the CAS PD2. Notice that the enable weighing is slightly different as well as the Megalin single cable. This also has different numbers, so um, you will need to definitely check uh, which ones are suited for the scale. So for the weight start position, depending on the weight type or weight measures, some do it in kilograms, others do pounds. So you have to adjust the weight start position and weight digits accordingly. For the weight factor, if you're doing it in kilograms, it should be 0.001. So the tear weight is, um, if you're weighing something inside of a bag, um, this weight will have to be taken out from the final weight. So let's say, for example, the bag may weigh 
0.001, it will remove this amount from the total weight. We can now test the scale, and if it's working all fine, we can go save. Next, we need to set up our items that normally get weighed. So we need to go to stock and add modify stock. And let's say we're gonna to go to the food section. And let's say we choose Fuji apples. So with this stock item, we need to make sure that the use scale box is ticked. If this option is not checked, then the system will not use the scale. So that way the point of sale can read the weight of the Fuji apples. So we're going to close and we're going to see how this works. So we'll go to fruit and veggies and that's a Fuji apple. What this person needs to do is put the Fuji apples on the scale and wait to stabilize because it tends to take between one and four seconds. Once it stabilizes, you can left click on Fuji apples and here you can see that the weight 4.563 kilograms and based on the weight and the cost per kilogram, for Fuji apples, the total amount is 1346. So once we choose get weight, the point of sale brings back the quantity and amount from the stock file and then calculates the total. We can set that all up for all the other items that we would like to use for scales. So this is the way that we use the second type of scales. Here you can see the second type of scales that was used for this setup. So once you put the item on there, the display will change to give you the weight. So once you press the item, after the weight has been taken, it will bring it back and put it onto the point of sale. There is another type of scale. Um, this is a scanner as well as a scale. It can weigh as the previous one, and also it can scan barcodes. So this one has a dual purpose of weighing and scanning. And these ones are generally used um, in supermarkets due to high traffic. We hope this video has been helpful and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.